A congressional conference committee is up against the clock looking for a compromise on border security President Trump will sign to avoid another government shutdown in just five days. Joining us now, two leading members of the panel, the Republican chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee, Richard Shelby, and Democratic Senator John Tester. Gentlemen, welcome to Fox News Sunday. Senator Tester, Thank let me you. start with you. Has the, the conference committee reached agreement at least on the number for border barriers? And is, these reports that it's going to be south of $2 billion. Is that true? Uh, still in negotiations, Chris. Uh, and, and I think that uh, when you're talking about border security, it includes more than just a barrier. It includes technology. It includes what we're going to do at the ports, manpower, uh, aircraft, the works. Uh, we are not to a point where we can announce a deal. Negotiations are still going on. There are good people on this committee. So I have confidence uh, that hopefully we'll get something done very soon. Uh, Senator Shelby, you, I hope you heard uh, Chief of Staff Mulvaney just before you say that uh, apparently an issue has come up and that the talks are in jeopardy. Tell me what that is. I think the talks are stalled right now. Uh, I'm hoping we can get off the dime uh, later today or in the morning because time's ticking away. But we've got some problems uh, with the Democrats uh, dealing with ICE, that is, the detaining criminals uh, that come into the U.S. And, and they want to cap on them. We don't want to cap on that. Uh, we haven't, as John Tester said, we haven't reached a number on the barrier yet, but we're working and we're hoping we can get there. But we've got to get fluid again. We've got to start movement. I, I'm going to get to uh, Senator Tester on this idea that the talks are stalled. But, but on this, this question of the number, you met with President Trump on Thursday and you came out and said that you were more optimistic than you had been. If... Look, for the sake of, the, of this argument, for the, for the sake of this discussion, if the number is $2 billion, substantially less than the $5.7 billion, did the president give you any assurance that he's willing to go along with that number to avoid another government shutdown? Well, the president, uh, our talks with the president are confidential, but uh, I came out of the meeting thinking we could make a deal with the Democrats if they're willing to meet us halfway. Secondly, uh, the president basically in the conversation gave us some latitude to talk and that's what we're trying to do to get to yes today. Uh, Senator Tester, uh, what do you, uh, do you agree with Senator Shelby, Shelby that the talks are stalled and specifically this deal of detention? There has been talk that Democrats want fewer detention beds uh, and, and which raises the question if you can detain fewer people does not mean you have to catch and release more which raises the possibility more of them won't show up for their court hearings. Chris, it's, it's a negotiations, okay? Negotiations seldom go smooth all the way through. It's give and take, it's compromise. It's the way government's supposed to work. We've got good people on this conference committee, Chairman Shelby, John Hoven, Blunt, uh, Capito, you know, you know, Durbin, I can go down the list. The bottom line is, is that, that we've got people who aren't bomb throwers. They're people who know how to work together and get a deal. I, uh, I'm not positive we'll end up with a deal, but with this group of people and the folks from the House, I think we're going to end up with something that deals with detention beds, with barriers, with technology, with the challenges we have on the southern border in a common sense way. Chairman Shelby is correct. Time is of the essence. We need to move forward. We need to keep our eyes on this. But I'm very hopeful, not positive, but very hopeful we can come to an agreement. Why, why would you want to limit the number of detention beds if the idea is you want to detain them rather than catch and release them and then they merge into the, into the country? I can tell you, until we get a final number... I'm not sure we're doing any of that. Uh, we've got to come. But on we've got to come to a final. To? We've got to come to a final number, and it's a negotiated process. I think what everybody wants, including the people I serve with, both sides of the aisle, they want to make sure that southern border is secure. There's many ways to do that, whether it's detention, whether it's technology, whether it's a barrier. And I think that we'll come up with. And can't do everything all at once, by the way. We have to prioritize and and move forward. And I think this committee is fully capable of prioritizing the expenditures, and hopefully. We'll get something the house can uh, house can pass the senate can pass and the president will sign Sen senator shelby let me bring you back into this obviously time is of the essence uh the government runs out of money or at least some agencies do at midnight friday night and 
because of a variety of rules. And <laughs> I love one of them is that the House actually wants time to read whatever you guys come up with. The thought has been that you have to make a deal, you have to announce something by tomorrow. Do you feel that's a deadline and how confident are you that you can reach a deal by tomorrow? Chris, that is a deadline. I'm not confident we're going to get there. I'm hoping we'll get there. Uh, but the House has some leeway uh, as far as they got rules, that's true. They can waive rules, sometimes that's difficult. But I think the next 24, I said the other day it was 72 hours, I think it's the next 24 hours are crucial. We could close some deals, but they've got to be good to secure our borders. Well, well let, let me just pursue that for you a second. You're saying, you know, it, it's got to be a good deal, obviously. What if you can't make a deal uh, in 24 hours? Do you give up? Do you keep going? What, what happens? I don't think we ever give up, uh, but uh, the president will have some options. Perhaps we'll have some options, but uh, short of a deal, they're not good options. Well, let me just pick up on that with you, Senator Shelby. I'll bring in Senator Tester in a moment. What is your attitude at this point towards a government shutdown? Is that just completely off the table? And there's been talk that there are a lot of of Republicans, particularly in the Senate, who really don't like the idea of declaring a national emergency, despite what Mick Mulvaney said, fear, fearing that it will set a precedent for a Democratic president. Well, uh, shutting down the government should always uh, be off the table. We would like to it to be off the table. We've worked hard to fund the government. We're going to continue to work hard in these negotiations. But the specter of a shutdown is always out there. And, and what about national emergency? Well, I think the president has some powers under the Constitution and also under the statute. But I, I had rather we reach a legislative conclusion to this. That's our job. I'm going to do everything I can to do it. But uh, we've got to do it both ways. It's got to be a double-edged sword here. <laughs> we, I, I, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, Senator Tester, there was this quite a lot of optimism as recently as this weekend that you guys were going to have a deal, you're going to announce something. Yes, the president was going to have to eat uh, considerably less money for a border barrier. How much trouble is this in right now? Well, I think uh, Chairman Shelby put his finger on it. I mean, if we stay focused on getting a deal and we negotiate in good faith on border security, I think we'll end up with something that can work and keep the government open and give certainty for the not only the public employees but for the for the safety of the country. And and I think that's the bottom line. And uh, and nobody wants a shutdown. Nobody wants the president to use some kind of emergency powers. We just need to do our job, and we can do it. And look, every negotiation, almost every negotiation, is out there hits bumps in the roads. There are bumps in the road, but as long as we stay focused in a bipartisan way, bicameral way, to get this done, I'm hopeful we can get it done. Is it a done deal? No, it isn't. And we could end up in a train wreck, which happened before. But I don't think anybody has an appetite for a government shutdown. And I think everybody wants to make sure our borders are secure. You, you want to give me some odds on the idea that you get, is it 50-50, better, worse, that you're going to have a deal I'm, tomorrow? I'm a farmer. I never make the right decision when I'm selling my grain. I'm not a... Hey. I'll say, Chris, yes? I'll say 50-50 I'll say we get a deal. I hope and pray we do. So the glass is half full. <laughs> well, it, it depends on how you look at that, isn't it, Senator? Uh, I want to ask you about, about one more question, uh, gentlemen. Well, there's no question that, that illegal immigration is a real problem. There are charges, particularly from Democrats, that President Trump is exaggerating it. And, and I want to talk about a specific issue. He, the president goes to El Paso tomorrow for a big rally. And here's what he said about the situation in El Paso at the State of the Union. The border city of El Paso, Texas, used to have extremely high rates of violent crime. With a powerful barrier in place, El Paso is one of the safest cities in our country. But let's look at the facts. From 1993 to 2006, the number of violent crimes in El Paso, and this is before the wall was built, fell 34%. Construction of the wall didn't start till 2008, and from 2006 to 11, before the wall was built till after the wall was built, the violent crime rate in El Paso actually rose 17%. So it fell before the wall, rose during and after the wall. Senator Shelby, is the president 
misleading or exaggerating the threat to Americans? Well, I don't, I don't think he's misleading or exaggerating. We've got real problems along our borders. We've got uh, millions of illegal immigrants in this country. We've had a lot of drug dealers, gangs, and everything come across that border. Uh, he's not exaggerating it. Uh, we've got to secure the border. We've made progress, but we can do better than this. I think we owe it to the American people. Senator Shelby, Senator Tester, thank you both. Thanks for your time. Always good to talk.